Uh, it is time for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, here on Robin Hood Radio. Uh, you can find Arthur here live on a Monday. Uh, also uh, rebroadcast during the week and on the weekends, as a matter of fact, and continually 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, at On Demand, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, and we click on him right now. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning. And how are you? Uh, I'm okay. My <laughs> cold is a little bit better. All right. All right. But, you know, I've needed a lot of soup. I do find soup is helpful. <laughs> it, you know, it's funny you mention that because I made uh, this weekend, I made my homemade mushroom soup and some, some chicken, uh, just some chicken broth. Well, I had some really good chicken broth in the freezer, and it was probably time to um, use it. Um, so I made, and also I got this. Um, a bargain on le- leeks have become very expensive, but I got a bargain on leeks, so I made some leek and potato soup. But I didn't make a thick one. I made a whatever. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Okay. I wanted to talk more about bread. Well, bread goes with soup. <laughs> it does go with soup, and it also goes into soup. Yes. This is the thing I wanted to talk about. <laughs> is you know I buy a loaf of fr- we're two people here. I buy a loaf of fresh bread, and, and, and we have, I have to say, incredible bread here in my neighborhood. So I have a choice of um, uh, several incredible breads to buy. But we don't go through a loaf of bread that fast. So sometimes I'll take half of it and freeze it. But I also use bread in so many different ways once it's getting dried out that no bread ever goes to waste around here. I mean, after a couple of days, you can make toast and, you know, you can still enjoy it as more or less as fresh bread. But eventually, I leave it in the uh, usually paper bag that it came in and allow it to dry out so that I can then use it in cooking. In fact, in my book, uh, uh, The Southern Italian Kitchen, I I have a whole essay on how even though we think of southern italian food as being pasta based it's more bread based <laughs> and sometimes I think of it as the breadcrumb cuisine and um to giggle to myself I went to a a very fancy italian restaurant last week uh, to celebrate my cousin's 87th birthday and almost everybody I mean I don't know we must have genetic likes because this is all family and there were only two uh, at a table of seven only two different orders and one was the hake uh, not, I'm sorry not hake halibut uh, oreganata so one of my family members says what's oreganata I, I didn't want to pipe up and say I know that but oreganata in, in southern Italy is when you take breadcrumbs season them however you're going to season them depending on what you're putting them on and uh, and make a, like a little breadcrumb crust on top of something. That's oreganata. In fact, the, 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 the oreganata I make the most is shrimp oreganata because it is so easy. And, and by the way, I do not buy... The, the next question is, what brand of breadcrumbs do you buy? I don't buy breadcrumbs. That's the whole point here, is I save bread and I make breadcrumbs. Now, if you buy white baguette, you know, long loaf style bread made with no sugar and it's a decent bread to eat, then go ahead and make breadcrumbs with it. I prefer these days to eat whole wheat and whole grain bread and a lot, many of those are not suitable for breadcrumbs. However, I did just find one that is suitable for other cooking things and that is, and it may be available everywhere these days because this bakery is everywhere is um, the Balthazar Bakery, which is the adjunct to the Balthazar Restaurant in Soho, uh, distributes their bread at least all over New York City that I know. Um, And the one that I've been buying is available in Whole Foods, and they call it the Swirl Whole Wheat or Whole Grain Bread. Whole Grain Swirl, maybe that's how they label it. And it is a swirl of dough. It is really a beautiful thing to behold. 
uh, but it's also a delicious thing to eat. And I find, for instance, last night, it go, it, it's a great bread to use when you need to soak bread to soak up stuff. So what I made yesterday with what was just in the house that I needed to use up, I had a half a can, of, a half of a 28 ounce can of tomatoes in a plastic container in, in the refrigerator, and I had these little um, adorable <laughs> onions, uh, maybe the size of um, not even a golf ball, and I I don't know what I meant to do with them. They were just so beautiful. I bought them. But what I did with them yesterday is I, I cooked them, I sliced them, and um, I cooked the slices in olive oil until they were tenderish, which meant like eight or ten minutes on not very high heat. And then I added my tomatoes, which um, I crushed as I added them to the pan. If you don't like to use your hands, put them in a bowl and mash them up with a potato masher or break them up with side of a spoon. And what you're going to make now is a thick, basically a thick tomato sauce. I did this, by the way, in a saucepan, not my usual skillet where I make tomato sauce. So this was in a small saucepan, must have come to about a cup of uh, uh, sliced uh, uh, onion, but you can use any onion. Uh, I actually, in this case, leek would be better. Um, I'm making something called papa al pomodoro. Papa as in Pap. Pap <laughs> tomatoes. So the pap is the bread. Um, so I cooked this with the tomatoes for about 10 minutes. And then I added chunks of my bread. Now this bread, this Balthazar whole grain swirl, I had, mm, I don't know, once I cut off the crust and I cut the interior, which is already somewhat dry because it's several days old. Several, yeah. Um, in fact, I had the end of one, two loaves, and so one was several days old, and one was maybe five or six days old. How do you store it? Well, in the case of my wanting it to dry out, yes, I just leave it in a, pla- in, a in a paper bag on the counter. Okay. Um, I don't <clears throat> really like to put it in plastic, but occasionally I'm overruled on this by Mr. Harnett, and he puts it in plastic, meaning a, a Ziploc bag. Yeah, doesn't that keep uh, it softer? But then you lose the crust. Right. Then again, if you toasting it, it doesn't matter. But definitely, if you keep it in plastic, even in the refrigerator, it's going to get moldy before it gets dried out. Correct. So if your point is to dry it out, which is my point, um, I just leave it in the in a, in a paper bag on the counter. Um, I don't even put it in my bread box, which I do have, because it'll, it, it, the humidity stays in there, and it also will get moldy before it dries out. And in fact, if you want bread just for making breadcrumbs, I suggest you take your fresh bread and cut it into cubes or big pieces and let it dry out, uh, you know, open to the air, uh, tossing it every once in a while so that all the pieces on the bottom get exposed to the air at the top. So basically, I'm looking for dried bread, Jill. Gotcha. So, hey. yeah. So, um, so yesterday, I had, you know, I don't know, maybe it ended up to be two generous cups of dried out bread cubes and I put that into my now thick tomato sauce and I mush it all up and I let the bread soak up the the, the juices of the tomato and it is a stiff mixture and uh, it's not it's sort of like cereal like a hot cereal mid texture maybe you can leave some of the bread in pieces if you like but I like it to be all sort of mushed up and then you serve this Besides that, you need to season it with salt and pepper, which I probably forgot to say. You see, you serve this with a drizzled with your absolute best olive oil. Now, let me stop for a minute because olive oil is a fetish of mine. I could live, I think, on bread, good bread, whole grain bread, olive oil, and salt, and garlic. Of course, you need some protein. <laughs> so once in a while, you got to add protein. But really, to me... Life is about great bread and great olive oil. So one of the things I make most frequently, oreganata, or in dialect, ariganata, or, you know, there's so many different pronunciations, is shrimp, because this is like the easiest way I know shrimp. And my breadcrumb mixture is a half a cup of dry breadcrumbs, 
a half a teaspoon of salt, um, a large clove of garlic, very finely chopped or minced, uh, up to you how big a piece of garlic, big a clove of garlic, a teaspoon of dried oregano. Now, I'm particular about my oregano, too, and I have for years been buying um, wild Sicilian oregano, which is easily available these days. It comes on the stem in, in uh, wrapped in cellophane. Of course, I do get oregano from the Sorrento coast, uh, which I love, too, brought to me by friends. But a teaspoon of good oregano, and I like a teaspoon measured the leaves and then the dried leaves, and then I like to rub it into the mixture so that it gets powdery. A, tea, a quarter teaspoon, an eighth of a teaspoon, depending on your taste, of, of hot pepper. Now, I, in this, sometimes use what we used to call Aleppo pepper. Now that there's no more Aleppo, I don't know what we're going to call it. There's another name for it, of course. But you could use uh, paprika. You could use cayenne pepper. This is up to you, but some kind of sweet or sweet to hot pepper. Um, and a tablespoon of oil, it's all you need. And you mix this all up. Now you've oiled up these crumbs. You spread your shrimp. This is enough for about three-quarters of a pound to a pound of shrimp. You spread your shrimp in a, um, and I use my, a glass dish, a Pyrex dish, and preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Um, sprinkle your breadcrumbs uh, over the top of the shrimp. Some of them, of course, are going to fall into the plate. Don't worry about it. And um, and bake takes about I don't know, fifteen minutes at the most, depending on the size of the shrimp. Could take as little as ten, twelve minutes. And you serve this with a little lemon wedge. It's a great way to do almost anything. But you could you could fish fillets like oh. we did in the fancy restaurant, the halibut, and they pretty much put the same thing on top. And charged over thirty dollars for it. I mean, it's not a hard preparation here. No, you could they, do it to chicken. One of the old family recipes that you could just totally improve on is what happens in your oregano. Can you put a little bit of a, a not for, for for me, not for shrimp, and but but possibly for chicken, just a teeny little bit of a grated cheese in it, or no? Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> in fact, uh, let me see if I can find this recipe. I just this is a recipe that I haven't made in a long time. <coughs> I didn't even check to see if it, I don't think it actually made it into Southern Italian table, but it was tested for Southern Italian table. I, I'm, I'm only and, asking because a family recipe called Smelly Chicken that was just delicious, which was basically uh, uh, bread crust. Well, you know. this is this is pork, mm. and for this pork dish, um, I, I just mixed the breadcrumbs with parsley and grated pecorino with grated sheep's milk cheese, and that's it. Sometimes, uh, by the way, even in the shrimp case, sometimes a few fennel seed in your yep. um, in your breadcrumb mix is great. But this recipe, pa- baked pork with breadcrumbs, um, comes from my friend Tonina, um, who lives in Salerno, but she's from a little town in, in Chilento, which is southern uh, province of Salerno, really on the Calabrian border, because I've encountered this dish um, in, in Calabria, too. So it's Chilento Calabrian. But here's the deal. Meat in Italy is really different than the meat here. And I have made this with the pork shoulder that Tonina told me to use, uh, two pounds of pork shoulder. But pork shoulder is a pretty resilient cut, let's call it that. It needs long, slow cooking. And I don't know if every pork shoulder you're going to buy is going to result in tender enough meat. So you might want to use, I uh, do not use loin, um, but maybe you could use tenderloin. Um, I don't find that as dry as the actual loin. But anyway, it really should be made with a, a cut some. that has some marbling. And you cut the meat into one and a half inch pieces, and you, you actually massage it with salt and the juice. For two pounds of pork, about two teaspoons of salt and the juice of a lemon. Mm-hmm. And you really massage this into the meat, which I do think helps tenderize it. Then you you put uh, 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 the oven at 300 degrees only. And when you uh, uh, take the meat out of the bowl, oh, I, did I say salt and pepper? You need salt and pepper in there, too. Um, you drain the meat, but don't dry it. Just Just drain off any excess lemon juice. 
and put it in one layer in a casserole. Now, this is very important. The pieces should not be touching each other. No crowding in this pan, even though it's a temptation. Um, and the breadcrumbs get mixed. Well, let's see how many breadcrumbs for that. About a quarter of a cup, a third of a cup of fine dry breadcrumbs, uh, a tablespoon at least of finely chopped parsley, and two rounded tablespoons of grated pecorino. And you mix that all up together, you sprinkle it over the pork, and you bake it at 300 degrees for a full hour. Then turn the heat up to 350 and cook it for another half an hour. In this time, um, the, any liquid that is collected in the bottom of the pan should be reducing. It actually gets a little thickened by the breadcrumbs that have fallen into the pan. Um, and, um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that sounds um, so it like... takes an hour at 300 and then about an, a half an hour at 350, and it should be tender. Um, this does not reheat well, so this is something to make for the family. It's very easy to throw together and serve it right out of the oven. Right. Um, with a potato, mm. may I say. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I want a potato here. I, 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 I would, too. <laughs> can, well, can you put the potato in there or no? Or does it ruin it? You're always wanting to change the recipe. No. I, I did that terrible. I'll tell you why you don't want to do that. I can... You don't want to do that because it will change the cooking time yep. of the pork. I understand. Plus, I don't know how big you're going to cut the potato so that it cooks in the same time as that pork. Correct. I mean, it's just too complicated. No, I'm, I'm only asking because it's I... It's not as easy as you think. <laughs> yeah, and and also, I've, here's here's what I love about what we're talking about with oregano or however you want to whatever dialect we're using, and that is that, um, you know, it, it, it flavors things in a way without having to get into the entire, you know, first you dip it in egg, and then you dip it in breadcrumbs. It's, you know, it's, it's a totally different taste. I like taste. that, too, though. Oh, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but I, I, I don't... Actually, one of the things I made this week, mm -hmm. I considered using breadcrumbs, but in the end I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't. I made uh, fried uh, uh, fennel, sliced the fennel very thin, mm. well, I mean, you know, no more than a quarter of an inch, through the root end so that the pieces hold together. Some of them will not hold together, of course, because there's no root that goes to the edge, but don't worry about it. And then I dipped the uh, fennel in first egg and then seasoned flour, meaning salt and pepper, and, and fried it. In, in canola oil, and I was my intention was to make a, a parmigiana di finocchio, a, a fennel parmigiana, because I ran across a picture of this um, as made and served by my friend Rosaria in Salerno, and I thought, oh, and so by the way, uh, uh, Rosaria is allergic to aged cheeses, or she has a bad reaction in any case. So I would say, lucky she lives in mozzarella country. <laughs> Um, so she, she she makes this fried fennel topped with mozzarella, and then she'll give you some grated cheese if you want to put it on. And no sauce, so it's in bianco, it's white, but you can put sauce on. And I think the next time, I'm, oh, by the way, so the fennel slices were delicious that way with just a little salt on them, but I did throw them in the oven later on, reheating them with the um, grated uh, Swiss cheese, which I have very good Swiss cheese in the house now, and some parmigiano, and it was delicious, but I... You know, I think I think the mozzarella and tomato sauce treatment might be more interesting. <clears throat> In any case, uh, back to breadcrumbs. Um, you know, breadcrumbs are often, I know listeners know this, are often used in Italy instead of grated cheese. Uh, people say it's because, oh, we were too poor to have grated cheese, so we just had breadcrumbs, and that may be true, but... Sometimes, out of necessity, traditions grow. And nowadays, people love just having their breadcrumbs instead of cheese on certain pastas. For instance, if you make um, uh, I, something I do make, uh, spaghetti with uh, just melted anchovies and garlic and oil, uh, that does not call for cheese, but, but, but toasted breadcrumbs is delicious on top. And I say toasted, I put them in a skillet, either toast them dry until they start browning up a little bit, or sometimes I do with oil. Depends. In, in Puglia, <coughs> excuse me, the, um, 
the heel of the boot, so to speak, uh, they actually some some restaurants will actually put a bowl of toasted breadcrumbs on the table for you to use as you would cheese. Um, I don't see that many other places. I don't know if I ever encountered that anywhere else except at home. And um, it's a good idea, and it's another way to use up those breadcrumbs. So I also, so I made, I told you about the papa al pomodoro, which is just cubes of bread uh, sort of melted into a, a dense tomato sauce, in my case seasoned with baby onions, and, 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 and you could use leek would be very good. Even garlic would be excellent. Um, but in the South, that's a papa al pomodoro is a word and, and dish from Tuscany, um, but in the south of Italy, they make pane cotto, cooked bread. Got to say, one of the most memorable lunches I ever had was at an estate in Calabria, a wine estate, where they gave us lunch, and the feature, the main feature, was this enormous, enormous loaf of bread that had been hollowed out, and to use as a terrine, and inside was the bread, which had been dried out so that it would absorb liquid. It, 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 it was mixed with um, cooked broccoli rob and oil, mm. and the broccoli rob was cooked, of course, with some hot pepper and garlic, because this is Calabria, they use a lot of hot pepper. It wasn't really hot, 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 though. And the big feature was, and as I said, olive oil. Uh, this uh, estate also produced its own olive oil. And I guess this must have been October or November that I was there because they had the freshly pressed oil um, in a cruet. And you were to take your portion of uh, cooked bread with broccoli rob and pour generously uh, the new oil over this panne bread cotto, cooked bread. So it's the same thing as Papa Pomodoro. And you can take any vegetable, pretty much, and turn it into cooked bread the next day. If you got some stale bread and some good olive oil, mm-hmm. like I say, it's all about the olive oil. Uh, but hello, you there? Yeah, I'm here because I have to just briefly interrupt. I was traumatized earlier this week, uh, no, yeah. not intentionally, but um, somebody had used basically a um, sweet, swirly piece of bread. Uh, uh, to make croutons out of for a Caesar salad. And it okay. just, it ju- I, I think that it's worth mentioning that it depends on your taste, your family's taste, how much sweet you like. Because I can tell you that when personally I bit into that, I was like, oh, you no, got to be joking. Not for a Caesar salad. I understand. But that's that's yeah. my. But how about on to- uh, croutons on a squash soup? That, that would be great. You know, the, the little bit of sweet, thing. little zap. I do save bread for Caesar salad, by the way. I do make croutons, and, and there's no reason in the world you can't make good whole grain or whole wheat croutons. Those are fine. It was just, it, it was this. It to be white bread. It, but it was the sweet. Uh, I don't want that. It, it, was, it was like, like brioche. I, 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 I did, I'm it was, joking only, but I didn't vote for Cynthia Nixon for governor of New York <laughs> because she had, what did, I don't know, something on a cranberry bagel. I don't know. Right, okay. But it, it, she it's, doesn't it's, deserve to be governor if that's the way she eats. And and then I have another question. The Marshall, Cuomo's at least came from Queens and know about the, They know about food. Marshall's howling, but listen. I, I wonder if she... No, he shouldn't be. It's, I still have four minutes left. I'm watching. That's right. No, 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 no. He's howling at what you just uh, said. She should be oh. governor because the way she eats. Yeah, yeah. It's just like what's his name couldn't eat a, sl- a slice of pizza the right, right. way. No, deserve. I'm sorry. I disagree with you. I, d- I don't. I don't. I, so, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, Come on. I don't in Italy, even... I'm literally, not everybody, but most people eat pizza with, with a knife. With fork and knife. I don't want to talk and, about... And in fact, I have friends here, and, you know, they don't want to burn the roof of their mouth with hot pizza, so they want to cut can off I, a little piece. Can I, I just... I, I don't think that that was a bad thing. Listen, at all. I, I have a. Fact, com- I, it was a good I have an olive oil question, please. Yeah. From politics to olive oil. You only have uh, five minutes it's, left. It's just a quick <laughs> question because I was, I I I am. Uh, you, you know, most most of the Newman's brand of uh, salad dressings. You know, they're they're so. Th- there's a whole range. Never bought of, one. Okay. There, I was pretty surprised when it started. You know, basically with Newman and Hotchner. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't taste bad. It tastes like it was good. It tastes like bottled salad dressing. No, it doesn't. It didn't. Now, I have no idea because the line is expanded out. But there are two... I have no, I have no uh, just, interest. 
just wait, just wait. There are two Caesar dressings. I haven't had either. One is a regular Caesar. One is a light Caesar. My Whatever issue is, is this. Exactly. My issue is this. Soybean oil is the first. See, I've only ever made Caesar salad with olive oil. Okay. So I'm just wondering, can you... Can, can you do it? I'm I mean, anti-soy oil, so right away you lost. Okay. Well, the other has water before the soy oil. Okay, I just... I, well, I, water is water, but soy oil is, I don't know, so what, what, encouraging bad agriculture. All right, so basically you, you, you would start your Caesar salad with uh, some good olive oil, yes? Yeah, I started with a piece of garlic. Yeah, I understand. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, You're on your own. Uh, here's, I want to give this recipe out because it's so sensational, and I sort of made it up but not. Um... With with a lot of breadcrumbs in the house right now, <laughs> uh, this was not a problem. I had everything. In, I had the peppers. Here's the deal: you got to find good red peppers. This might be a lull in the season. The local season is over. Um, I haven't seen uh, the nice peppers from Mexico, but when we get the nice peppers from Mexico, this is worth making. So four large red peppers. I had roasted these peppers because they were the last peppers of the season. I figured. And I didn't want them to spoil, and I couldn't eat it all at once. So I roasted four large red peppers, and then I thought, what am I going to do with these? Other than eat them as they are, which I love, but I did it all summer. Not all summer, but at least August and September. In any case, I made muhammara. Muhammara is a roasted red pepper and walnut dip slash spread um, from Syria. And I first tasted this many, many moons ago at the home of Paula Walford when she was writing her book on the Eastern Mediterranean, and this was uh, one of the recipes in the book. But I didn't use her recipe. I made it up. Um, I took four large roasted red peppers, all cleaned up, put them in my mini processor with a cup of shelled walnuts, two very large cloves of garlic, three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, good oil, three tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. Now, that's a product that used to be rare, hard to find. Now I see it everywhere. So I think it maybe it's become even trendy. Three tablespoons, and I have other uses for it. Three tablespoons of pomegranate molasses, at least a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper, meaning ground pepper, but you could use more if you like it really spicy. A half teaspoon of salt. By the way, I always say the spicier you make it, the less salt you need. If you're on a salt-reduced diet, make it spicier and leave out the salt, a half a teaspoon of ground cumin. It just adds a little under note, not a big cumin note. And you grind this all up in the, in the mini processor until it's a puree. It's not going to be totally smooth, 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 but it's going to be nice. And then you're going to see it's loose. It's too loose. And what are you thicken it with all together now? Breadcrumbs! <laughs> At least a half a cup of dried, unseasoned breadcrumbs. Um, it depends on the bread. It depends on your peppers, the exact amount. But you want it to be thick enough that when you dip something into it, it'll stay on whatever you've dipped. Uh, it shouldn't be runny. And then chill this for at least several hours because the flavors do take time to meld. <coughs> the second day, it's great. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. And you can dip pita in it. You could dip vegetables in it. You could make a sandwich using it as a spread. I thought of that today. And it's called muhamara. There are, I'm, I'm sure there are recipes on the internet. I know there are, including Paula Wolford's original recipe. All right. But this one I just sort of did out of my head. Okay. And it was great. Right. Well, guess what? We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> but you timed it perfectly. <laughs> I'm watching the uh, updated clock now. Okay. That's good. <laughs> All right. All right. So everybody have a great week. Go vote tomorrow. Please go vote. Okay. No no, no acclamation here? No. You're not allowed to say go vote? Oh, well, no, yeah, absolutely. Wait, 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 but it's absolutely. Just, we're, we're, we're going to replay this a number of times. And, uh, That's okay. Vote, oh, all right. So vote, I'm sorry. Vote, Put no, that no. out. Vote no. <laughs> no, you vote, vote, vote early, vote often, starting on, now. On election day. No, I mean, day. tomorrow is the day. So right. if you, you exactly right. On Thursday or Saturday, uh, Marshall will remove it. You can whatever still, way you want you to can go vote. You can still go vote. It doesn't care. You will be anyway. That's right. Okay. All right. Take care, kids. Thank you. Arthur Schwartz, the food maven here on Robin Hood Radio.
Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven from Hathaway Young, located on South Center Street in Millerton, Flawless Catering and Event Planning, HathawayYoung.com. John Andrews Restaurant on the Hillsdale Road in South Egremont, 413-528-3467, on the web, jarestaurant.com. Rubiner's Cheesemongers and Grocers on Main Street in Great Barrington, 413-528-0488, Rubiner's.com. In Hillsdale, New York, Hillsdale Home Chef with two beautiful teaching classes, and they've got classes to go in those cooking rooms. More more information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com. And Haven Cafe in Lenox, Massachusetts, offering quality food and excellent service. From a fresh cup of great coffee to healthy, delicious breakfast, or sit down with a dinner with a tasty, life-enhancing meal that you can take home. Also, they feature catering. Supporting local organic farmers, environmentally conscious, and epicurious distributors, havencafebakery.com.